to the Chrissy B Show, everybody, where today has been all about autism. And now it's time to talk to the lovely Lily Suter, when we're going to be discussing autism and nutrition. Welcome to the show, Lily. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you back. As usual, you always give great advice, so we just that's why we invite you time and time again. So, to tell us, is can nutrition actually help someone with autism? Um, well, many people with autism actually have digestive issues, um, and in children, about 85% have some kind of IBS type symptoms, which can okay. actually, in a way, it can lead to sort of behavioral issues just because of the pain and, and the, you know, all the digestive issues that they're having to go through. So okay. um, in that sense, nutrition can help okay. with digestion. So it's looking at making sure you're getting in enough fiber into your mm. diet. So having plenty of whole grains, beans, lentils, pulses, sort of chickpeas, okay. uh, lots of vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, making sure you're having enough water within the diet as well is really, okay. really essential. Yeah. Food intolerances and food allergies are another area which um, sort of scientists have looked at. Um, mm. There probably isn't enough evidence to give a blanket statement saying, that everybody with autism has a food intolerance or a, a food allergy. However, okay. there's been quite a bit of research on dairy products and mm -hmm. um, gluten as well um, in relation to autism. Um, and casein is actually a protein found in dairy. Mm -hmm. So, so by that I mean it could be you know cow's milk or goat's milk yeah. or she, you know anything, um, and it could be in cheese, yogurt. Uh, and they, some evidence has shown that that can exasperate sort of symptoms associated with autism okay. as well. Um, same thing goes with gluten as well. Yeah. Sometimes when gluten is eliminated, sometimes some of the behavioural symptoms can actually improve. Mm -hmm. This isn't a blanket statement for everybody. So yeah. when eliminating certain food groups from the diet has to be done with care. So I would advise that anyone would go and see a, a nutritionist or a okay. dietitian yeah. to help them with this. Because the last thing you want to be doing is eliminating food groups. Uh, which willy-nilly, which you don't really need to do, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and potentially becoming deficient in certain nutrients. Okay, so, yeah, um, so that's one area. And I guess that also, you know, as we're talking about the gut, gut mm. bacteria is also really, really important to focus on. So the scientists are now referring to our gut as our second brain. Yes. There's a very strong sort of gut-brain axis or link between the gut and the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of our neurotransmitters, so, so by that I mean serotonin, our happy hormone, dopamine, the reward pathway sort of neurotransmitter, yeah. um, are produced, a lot of them are actually located within the gut, so not in the brain. 90% okay. of serotonin is within the gut. So interesting. 10% in the brain, yeah. yeah. And our gut bacteria actually influence the amount of serotonin and dopamine that we produce. Mm. Um, so if you have any imbalances in, in good or bad bacteria in the gut or any sort of alterations within gut bacteria, you may not be producing the correct amount of serotonin and dopamine that you need, which can okay. eventually lead to behavioural type issues. Yeah, yeah. And actually, again, studies have shown that those with autism actually have altered gut bacteria. And wow. if you supplement with some certain strains of, of gut bacteria in a probiotic yeah. form, sometimes it can help with, with symptoms, but it's very hard to know yeah. which yeah. specific strain that is. So my advice from that with, with gut bacteria is simply you could either supplement with a probiotic, which mm -hmm. could come in a capsule form, um, or you could eat just lots of fibre rich food. So okay. Trillions, spe trillions of species of gut bacteria and they literally feed off fibre. So it helps all the different species flourish and grow within the gut. So again, loads of vegetables, even things like sort of raw bananas are, yeah. can act as a prebiotic so they can help okay, gut bacteria to grow. Yeah, lots of beans, pulses, again, nuts, seeds are going to okay. be really, really vital. Right. So What are you going to be making today for us then? So today I'm going to be making a smoothie. Mm -hmm. So it's called a nut butter fudge smoothie. Sounds delicious. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it is dairy free so there's no casein that protein okay, molecule yeah. it is also yeah. gluten free 
The issue with dairy-free, gluten-free is if people are trying that often, they, they don't have much sort of nice sweet treats that can be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's no refined sugar, there's no rubbish, there's no additives in here, yeah. but it's sort of a tastier smoothie with a chocolatey taste basically. Yes. All right, so take us through how we're going to do this. Okay, thing. so first of all, I'll just go maybe through the foods. We've got all bananas, right. which is full of vitamin B6. Yeah. Um, do you want me to explain a bit about the yeah, B6 briefly, or yeah, shall I very briefly? briefly? So yeah. B6 again, a lot of research in relation to autism and, and B6. B6, oh. it helps synthesise or helps make serotonin and dopamine again. Okay. Uh, so it's a really, really important uh, vitamin to have yes. in the diet. Um, so we've got banana, we've also got cinnamon, mm -hmm. which is great for balancing blood sugar. Um, linseeds, or the other word is flax seeds, uh, and they are full of fibre, but also omega-3 fats mm. for the brain. Most yeah, of our brain, brain is yeah. made up of fat. Mm. Um, also protein, and then almond, sorry, peanut butter. Yes. No sugar in here at all, and it's uh, full of protein again and healthy fats. It all sounds lovely already, we haven't even put it together. Yeah, yet. cacao, yeah. which is a, a raw chocolate, so full of antioxidants. Mm full of magnesium. Guilt-free. Guilt-free, yeah. Yes. And it works very well in combination okay. with the B6 yeah. and almond milk, which is okay. dairy-free. So yes, yeah, so I'll start. So it's literally, I don't have anything to measure this with, but usually it's around 300 mils, but it doesn't really matter how much you put in. So almond milk is very low in sugar, which is really great. Um, and it tastes lovely as well, doesn't and it? And it tastes really good. Like um, good yes, yeah. yeah, thank okay. you. And then it's one banana. Um, again, this can act as a prebiotic feeding or good gut bacteria, which is and great. And should be a, a ripe banana, a very ripe it banana, can, just um, for the sweetness. Yeah, the riper it is, the sweeter it is, basically. Yeah. It really is up to you, however sweet you okay. like your smoothies. Um, for kids, especially, they'll, they'll Yeah, like they'll it. prefer yeah. the riper ones. Um, one table, oh, sorry, one tablespoon of flax seeds. Sorry, they're going everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then one tablespoon of peanut butter. Okay. Um, so that's going to give it sort of the. Is that the way for you? <laughs> yeah, that's going to give it the sort of nutty, indulgent taste yes. in a healthy way. Um, you can switch it if there's any kind of allergies to peanuts. You can actually switch it to um, almond butter as well, okay. or, or yeah. different different types of nuts. Seed butters work really well as well. I love peanut butter. I yeah. just have it just like that on banana sometimes. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You can have it with apple or any any kind of fruit that you want and it tastes really great. So um, it's really important that you do go for the ones with no rubbish in, yeah. so yeah. no sort of trans fats as well. Um, then we have the cacao. So it's two tablespoons or four teaspoons. I think I might have this for breakfast tomorrow. I'll make my own one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then that's it. You can put a pinch of cinnamon as well, which I don't know whether I put in oh, yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, so it can be, you yeah, it can be a pinch. It. Usually, yeah. I quite like quite a bit of cinnamon in mine, yeah. but um, just add a little bit more flavour. You can also add ice as well yeah. if you like. Okay. Um, and then we just put that on top. Shall I give it a whiz? Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. How long should you blend it for? Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Nutri bullets are very, very quick. Yeah, so okay. it depends on how you like All it, right, really. A okay. couple of seconds. Of <laughs> Mostly. So that looks so naughty, but it's yeah, not, is it? No, not at all. Okay. There's no refined sugar. And a big thing also, uh, those suffering with autism shouldn't have a ton of high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have preservatives, additives, colorings, flavorings, all that additional rubbish that comes yeah. with processed food. So mm -hmm. again, if they're, going, if they're eliminating sort of dairy and gluten to see if that does improve symptoms, Having something like this is a, yeah. is a, you know, you can still have the indulgence of it without. It is really 
first of all, it tastes really nice and filling. It is yeah. tastes good. You can actually taste that it's really good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, that will probably see me through to lunchtime. Yeah, definitely, that for breakfast. definitely. Smoothies yeah. are great for filling you up. All right, so. Lily, thank you for that. But we do have we do have a couple of viewer questions if I can find them down here. We've got a, bit, a couple more minutes if I can ask you. Um, Okay, our first question that we have to you, not to do with autism, is something different. Um, this person is asking, can drinking too much English breakfast tea be damaging for you? My partner easily drinks 15 to 20 cups a day and she swears it can only be good for her. I'm not too sure. Can you help? So English breakfast tea can actually have just as much caffeine as coffee. Oops, really? Um, yeah, and, and what oh. happens every time you're, you're drinking caffeine, it's a stressor on the body. So it puts us into a sort of fight or flight mode, causes the body to release mm. adrenaline and then the stress hormone cortisol mm -hmm. that shunts sugar into the bloodstream from our energy stores and gives us sort of a temporary blood sugar high, but it will always result in a blood sugar crash. Okay. And it just can cause cravings for more tea like quick fix oh, okay. tea or, or other cravings for quick fix foods like sugary foods yeah. or, or refined shoot uh, sorry refined foods mm -hmm. we're only meant to have i think the maximum amount of caffeine per day is around 400 400 milligrams so it's actually it, well it's a relatively large amount in my eyes but maybe for, for this lady it's it's not so much yeah. do, do you know what i mean how many but cups would that be like about it's it varies because the yeah. problem is say you go into starbucks they yeah. have very very large cups yeah, and the yeah. cups are getting larger and larger <laughs> and it seems the norm to yeah. have these massive sort of grande size cups of tea or coffee yeah. so yes 20 cups is going to be pretty excessive <laughs> my advice would be to switch some of those to herbal teas which okay. all have amazing health properties so like mm. peppermint tea is great for digestion Ginger's good for, for nausea, or yeah. cinnamon's good for balancing blood sugar. So what she really needs to watch out for is maybe also the strength of the tea that she's making. If she's sitting there, you know, swishing the tea bag around for a long time, then yeah. that will be a very high caffeine, you know, beverage. Mm. If it's just a couple of, you know, she's dipping in yeah. her tea bag a couple of times and it's a weak tea, that's slightly better. Okay. Herbal teas also count towards our water intake, so okay, it may yeah, be yeah. a good switch. Yeah. I, have, I normally have about three cups or two to three cups of English yeah, breakfast tea yeah. a day, but I seem to just need that first thing in the morning. Yeah, a lot of people do. So they've become, yeah. it just shows it can be very addictive, yes, caffeine, can, and actually yeah. just stopping cold turkey can be very hard. Oh, and I don't yeah. always advise against it. It's just sort of cutting down rather than completely cutting it out. Okay, yeah. fine. Just time for one quick one as well um is it healthy for children to be on a vegan diet or do they need some meat in order to develop properly so uh, my opinion is that you know i would never judge someone if that that was what they wanted to do and that yeah. you know their beliefs were that their children should be on a vegan diet it is possible but they have to be very very uh, strict in terms of making sure yeah. they're getting all the nutrition they need. They may need to supplement with certain supplements like B12, mm -hmm. iron. If the child is under five, it can be very, very hard because, yeah. you know, they, vegan diets don't tend to have enough calories in them because mm -hmm. there's a lot of fiber. So it suppresses appetite and the children may not be consuming oh, enough see, calories yeah. that they need to grow and develop. Um, so yeah, so if you're going to put your child on a vegan diet, definitely see a nutritionist to make sure they're getting everything they need and it has to be extremely well planned. Okay. Lily, thank yeah. you so much. Okay, no problem at all. see you again very soon thank on the programme. Alright guys, so don't go away because we do have more for you after this break.